right, here we go. Our video today that we're going to look at is a video about the upper limb. Our goal here is that I can correctly name the bones of the upper limb and ID key features of each. There are 30 bones in each upper limb. However, today we are just going to look at three. All right, we're going to save the bones of the hand actually for later. So each upper limb, of course, would be like your arm. Let's start out with our very first bone. The bone is called the humerus. Um, notice the spelling is a little bit different than maybe being funny. We do have a funny little character thinking it was humorous. Uh, so spell it hum R us. Here's our nice big picture, kind of a detailed look. We see uh, maybe you might recognize this big triangle shaped bone from the pectoral girdle notes. This is the scapula. And then up here we see part of the clavicle, but it's been cut away. So we are starting now looking at the humerus. So this long bone right here. This is the longest and biggest bone of your upper limb. Some features that we need to be aware of. First feature is called the head. The head is just this top part right here. It articulates with the glenoid cavity, uh, kind of what makes this whole um, glenohumeral joint, they call it. So the head of the humerus. It's very round. It's got cartilage uh, coating it. Uh, the next part we're going to look at is something called the capitulum. Now when you see the word caput, that might make you think of head, like you decapitate something. So the capitulum is actually a round shape. Ah, go back. It is this round shaped feature right here at the bottom of the humerus. It's round. You can see it's actually labeled here on this little picture if you can see it. It's called the capitulum. It is round. It's what articulates with the radius. The radius is going to actually spin on this capitulum. All right. The next feature is something called the trochlea. Now the trochlea is this portion over here. The trochlea, you'll notice we say it is spool shaped. So here's kind of a spool. It kind of has this shape to it, kind of a groove thing. This is going to be where the ulna is going to articulate with. So the ulna, when we bend our elbow back and forth, the ulna and the, and the, ulna and the radius are going to articulate with the capitulum and the trochlea of the humerus. All right. The next feature is something called the olecranon fossa, or sometimes called the olecranon fossa. We're not going to actually see it here. It is actually on the back side of the humerus. So we'll take a look at that in a moment here. The last thing we're going to check out is the lateral and medial epicondyle. So an epicondyle sounds like it is above the condyle, or epi, kind of like you know epidermis. Uh, so these would be the condyles, would be these roundy parts, the trochlea and the capitulum. So the epicondyle would be this bump right here and the bump right there. This is what's going to allow a lot of ligaments to attach and keep our upper arm kind of going where it needs to. So a lot of things are going to attach here to hold our elbow together. So let's see another view here. All right, in this view, nothing's labeled. Do you see this roundy projection right there? Any guesses of what that might be called? If you said it was the capitulum, you'd be correct. What about this other feature right here? It's kind of spool shaped. If you said trochlea, you'd also be correct. All right, take a look at the back side. This is the back side of the elbow. You'll notice there's this little socket right here. It's a little depression. That is the olecranon fossa. Olecranon fossa right there. Let's take another look at this picture. Um, take a look from the very back view. Maybe right here you can kind of actually see this situation here. This is the back side of the elbow, and then there's this little divot called the olecranon fossa, and that's what the ulna is going to kind of pivot inside. You can see in this cool thing, too, you see the blue articular cartilage. I see the capitulum, I see the trochlea, and you can see here the radius and the ulna. And again, these are going to be the bones we're going to look at today here. So humerus, radius, and ulna are the three bones that we're going to check out. One last image. Oh, never mind. I will move on to ulna. Here we go. All right, so the ulna feature that we're going to look at is something called the olecranon. Now, when I look at the ulna, the way I remember which bone is the ulna, as far as the radius of the ulna, the ulna looks like it has little teeth right here. It's like a hungry little guy right here, right? Put a little eye right there. Nice, you guys see my little face there. So, he is the hungry, hungry ulna. As I say, kind of you see the little mouth of him, okay? So when we point out the olecranon, the olecranon is this portion right here of the ulna. It is this kind of bump, this projection. In fact, you can feel your olecranon if you just touch your elbow. When you set your elbows on the table, 
you're riding on your Olecranons, alrighty? So Olecranon, it is going to fit in, if you guessed it, the Olecranon fossa. That's what that divot inside the uh, humerus is for, for this guy to fit inside. So when we lock our elbows all the way out, the elbow does not bend any further because it's locked into the Olecranon fossa. Some people have weird shaped elbows, my wife included, where it bends and it goes backwards. It has a lot to do with this opening being a little bit wider than it is on other people. All right, let's take another look at some other features on the ulna. Something called the trochlear notch. Now the trochlear notch, this is easy. It is that gap right here, this gap that's gonna grab onto the trochlea. Notice it's called the trochlear notch. It's gonna grab onto the trochlea, not the capitulum. All right, next thing, we look at the styloid process. Now the styloid process is way down here. It actually is like a little point, kind of like what we said, stilettos. So we have these styloid process, is the stiletto heels kind of down there at the bottom. Let's take another closer look at this, how this is all set up here. All right, so we see the humerus coming down. We see the radius and the ulna. One way that we remember, notice which finger this is. This is the pinky. We say this is the P-U, or pinky ulna, all right? The ulna comes on the pinky side of your arm, whereas the radius is going to be on the thumb side of the arm, okay? So P-U, pinky ulna, all right? Let's take another closer look at this, all right? You can actually see how this ulna actually, this is a, so this would be a reconstruction of the bones of the hand. Um, you can see the ulna coming down and then fitting into this little gap right here, this gap, of course, being the olecranon fossa. All right, one more picture here. All right, here's another closer view of the radius and the ulna, how they kind of are linked up together. We see the olecranon labeled right there. We see the trochlear notch labeled right there. And we see the, where's our styloid process of the ulna? There it is, styloid process of the ulna. Don't worry about the other features. We don't need to worry about the interosseous membrane and stuff like that. So these two bones kind of work together to make up our forearm. Here's that other picture I want to look at. So as the humerus comes in, you can kind of see how the ulna kind of wraps around it. This part right here of the ulna would be called the trochlear notch. What is this feature called right there? Okay, maybe change color so you can see this feature right here, this big bump. It's the bump of our elbow. It's the olecranon, and it fits into this little pocket up here called the olecranon fossa. All righty, moving on. Next bone we're looking at here is called the radius. The reason it's called the radius, when I think of radius, I think of something like this, right? Oh, that's a really bad looking geometric shape. All right, let me try that again. Anyway, it's um, this region right up here. You might notice it's round. It is actually looks like a circle. When you think radius, you think circle, so it's very easy to remember. We have the hungry, hungry ulna. It has that trochlear notch. And the radius has something called the head. It's called the radial head, okay? Super easy to recognize. It is a perfect little circle. It actually is what allows your hand to twist. When we get into class, we'll take a look at the skeletons, and when this hand twists, the radius actually spins as it rotates on the capitulum. All right, let's take a look now at something else called the radial tuberosity. Now, a tuberosity is simply a bump. Do you see this bump right here on the radius? That is a bump that allows your biceps to allow you to bend your arm and you know do bicep curls. So bigger biceps mean a bigger bump. Um, you could expect guys to have a larger radial tuberosity because of this. All right, bigger feature here. All right. So again, this is looking at that same joint from the other side. We see the ulna. We see the olecranon, the trochlear notch. This part right here, round part, would be the capitulum, and here is the radial head that would spin on the capitulum. Let's take another look at a picture here. All right, here we see the biceps connecting. Look at that coracoid process. We talked about that earlier. It's part of the scapula. All right, so the biceps comes from up here on the scapula, attaches right here on the radius. So what do you call this feature on the radius where this bump is for the biceps? It's the radial tuberosity right there, this bump that allows your arm to bend. All right. Last thing would be the carpals. If we spent the time, we could learn about all these carpals and metacarpals and phalanges. We're not going to do that right now. We'll talk about that in class. So that pretty much sums it up for us. Um, you can rewatch the video. We'll keep it nice and short. Have a great break. We'll see you in class.